Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Let us put our hands together for the Lord on today. God is worthy of our praise. He's worthy to be glorified. Because all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise, it does belong to him. Put your hands together. What a wonderful week we have had. God has blessed us every night, every day. And I don't want to say that there's a remnant, because a revival is supposed to be a starter. So what we had last week, we're going to count that as kindling. That was just the beginning. The fire is going on. The fire better. The revival is to start a fire. We got to keep it going. Amen. What God does, what God did then, he's going to keep doing it now. Amen. And we're expecting great things from the Lord on the day. Great things from the Lord. We're expecting salvation. We're expecting healing. We're expecting to see some healing on the day. Because we know God is a healer. God is a miracle working God. Amen. Amen. Father, we thank you, Lord, for life, health, and strength. 
Lord, we thank you for the clothes that you put on our back. We thank you, Lord, for homes. We thank you, Lord, for cars. We thank you, God, even for our church family. Lord, we thank you, Lord, even for the celebration that we had on like last night for our hit for our deacon, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for our Sunday school superintendent. Lord, we are glad, Lord, that you have blessed him with many years of age, God. We thank you, Lord, that you have blessed him and allowed him to come this far, God. Lord, we know that you will keep him, Lord. Lord, you allow him to go on, Lord. And Lord, we know because you have done that for him, God, Lord, we can look for you to do that for us. Lord, keep us, God. Lord, we know that you are not a respecter of persons. Lord, we know that you can, what you have done for one, you can, you can do for others. Lord, we saw that you have allowed one, Lord, one that was barely able to walk on this week, God. Lord, by the end of the service, they were able to run, Lord. Lord, we know that you are not a respecter of person. What you have done for one, you can do for another. Lord, we saw that you have filled some with the Holy Ghost. With your spirit, Lord, we saw that you have come, God, to reside, to dwell in people, Lord. Lord, we know again that what you have done for one, you can do for others. So, Lord, we expect even that on the day, God. Lord, we expect you to fill with the Holy Ghost on the day, God. Lord, we ask you to fill us again, Lord. Fill us again, Lord. We need you, Lord. We can't do anything without you, Lord. We need your presence, Lord. We need you in the building on the day, God. We need you to work in the building on the day, God. Lord, it is you who do the work, God. We are just vessels, God. But, Lord, we want to do your work as you will and as you desire, God. Lord, we want to do. Lord, we ask that you save some on the day. Lord, word, word our pastor's mouth on the day, God. That he may speak life. That he may, Lord, speak prophecy. Lord, people may be benefited. Lord, help us to have a heart to receive what is preached on the day. Lord, we know that we are all here. We are a family. Lord, we ask that you bless this church family and those that we are welcoming in on the day as our guests. Lord, bless our guests on the day. Lord, not only are they our guests, Lord, they are your guests. They have come to your house. Lord, show them, God, what you have for them, even in your house and amongst your people. This we ask and praise you in Jesus' name. To you be all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. For the reading of our scripture, I'm going to ask you to remain standing. I'm going to ask if Deacon Kennedy would read our Old Testament scripture. Brother Deacon Roberts would read our New Testament scripture. Say amen as he comes.
God. Can everybody say praise God on this morning?
uh, this, this, the ninth, this is next Sunday. August the 9th, we're having a leadership meeting. Pastor is calling a leadership meeting next Sunday at 5 p.m. That's next Sunday at 5 p.m. We have a leadership meeting. Also, back to school picnic will be Saturday the 22nd. That's the Saturday before school starts at 2 p.m. at the pastor's house. Amen. Amen. And the address is 81107 County Road 215. Amen. Amen. 8187. Okay. Heaven's Kitchen is having a blue light special today. Say blue light. Blue light. Blue light. Blue light. Everybody like a sale. Y'all show dead for us to be coming out of revival. What is the matter? Did y'all go to IHOP this morning for breakfast? Oh my God. <laughs> it's a heaviness in this house. Y'all ain't like y'all can't say blue light. Y'all can't say praise the Lord. You can't wave your hands. Appreciation Dinner. Give him a hand. Don't forget. 
That's your ticket. Don't forget the day. And it will be August the 15th. Amen. That's this month. Yes. 2009. Yes. At 6 p.m. And for yes. those of y'all, that's a Saturday, okay? Yes. At Stephen F. Austin University. The speaker for the evening will be none other than the Bishop R. L. Brazel of Bible Teaching Ministries of Longview, Texas. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. And the tickets are $20 per person, 18 and over. $10, 18 and under. If you need a ticket, see these ladies. Sister Doretha Freeman. Amen. Missionary Carolyn Patton. Missionary Doris Berry. Sister Gail Culpepper, I'm sorry, Sister Gail Culpepper, and Sister Bessie Griffin, or Sister Barbara Rankin. Amen. See these ladies for your tickets. You don't want to miss that. Amen. You don't want to miss the celebration for the shepherd of this house Amen. and his handmaid, his wife, that stand alongside of him, the one that pray for us day and night, the one that breaks the bread of life for this house, the one that seeks God on your behalf, the one that come and see about us when we're sick and when we're in need. You don't want to miss the celebration of that. Because when you celebrate him, you're celebrating God. Because he's God manservant. And he sent him to this house for these people such as we are. Please govern yourself according to all our announcements. And once again, don't forget to come expecting to hear a word from the Lord. It's hard to do anything. So, so praise the Lord, all ye his people. Do you have a problem? I know that the closer that the problem is to you, the bigger it seems. One thing, I had a little thing on my eye, and it seemed like it's about this big. Because I'm close to it. Now, sister, can you see this thing on my eye? All right, this the closer we are to a problem, the bigger it seems. And then we, we carry it around with us. But God wants to raise us up. God wants us to sow above our problems. He wants us to be above only and not beneath. He wants us to mount up with wings as eagles. He wants us to be up. Now the eagle, things are small down there. Sow above your problems. Get your eye off the problem. God is high and lifted up. Yeah. Keep your eyes on lifted up on high. Yeah. That way it won't, our, our journey that, down here won't be so burdensome. Yeah. It won't be so heavy. Yeah. It won't be so hard. Yeah. And we can keep our eyes lifted up. Now praise the saints. All you his saints. Praise the Lord. Gets up, we don't want him to have to work to get you to receive the word. Amen. We just want him to be able to go forth. Yes. Yes. They that gladly receive the word yes. were baptized. We need to be able to gladly receive the word yes. so we can get what God has for us. Yes. Amen. Yes. Amen. You may be seated. God has a word for us on today. And we need to be ready to receive his word. We need to have good ground. So when the seed comes, it can give a hundredfold. Amen? When the word comes, it can give a hundredfold. You want to be fruitful, don't you? Amen. We want to be vessels that God can use, right? Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 As we prepare to hear the word of God on today, we're going to ask that you stand to your feet after the choir ministers in song. But we're going to receive this great man of God who has a word for us on today. Amen. We're just finishing the first part of our revival. Yeah. That was just the part that started. Yeah. 
Now we got to live in what's been started. Right. The revival is not over. The right. Revi revival is continuing. Yes. We don't have a revival just to have a program five nights and then that's it. I came. Revi after revival, you live. Life comes after revival. It is not time to live. So after the choir ministers and someone like that, you stand to your feet. And we're going to see the man of God on today, our pastor, Elder Al Shaw.
of the real uh, evidence of uh, revival is change. Yes, sir. Yes, it is. Eve and 
said, did not God say? And it caused Eve to question and to doubt. Did God really say that? He didn't mean that. And caused her to error. And oftentimes, error does not bring only one person down. It has a far-reaching effect. And so the enemy is out to get you, not so much because he can't stop you, which he do. But he knows that if he can get you, there's a whole lot of other folk down the road that will be affected by your downfall. That's why you got to change. Because there's some folks saying, you are not going to change. That's how God made you, told you that. Thank you, Jesus. The book of Acts, chapter number 2. And today we're going to own up to our own change. We're going to own up to your own change. The Bible came this week that it might inspire and bring alive that hope that's in you. Come on, uh -huh. The revival doesn't come for the world, but the revival comes for those who are in the church. Amen, preacher. Amen. Who have lost their zeal. Uh -huh. Come on. Lost their step. All right. uh -huh. Forgot their commitment. Yeah. Yes. Come on, preacher. Amen. Amen. So now that you've been revived, yeah. find you three people and say, let's get to work. Say it like you mean, let's get to work. Now let's get to work. We got some work to do. We got work to do. I said, we got work to do. Book of Acts chapter 2, verse number 37. Yes, sir. How many of y'all know the truth hurts? Amen. 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 The truth comes to make you free. Yes, sir. That's the book right now. He who is free is free indeed. Don't draw up now. find to say amen. amen. Now when they heard truth uh -huh. Uh -huh. when they heard this what yeah. did they hear? They were pricked. They heard many things that Peter did exhort on this particular day of Pentecost. God was preparing the people for a new and living way. All the things that they had experienced, and even you today have experienced, God is preparing you for something greater than where you are right now. And you cannot, must not, will not look upon the natural way of looking at things. The enemy is dependent upon you to... Draw where God is taking you because of how you feel. How many of y'all know feelings play tricks on you? So the enemy is dependent upon you being, seeing something, hearing something, tasting, feeling, and then understand that that's not God because God doesn't deal in the flesh. He deals in the spiritual realm. Enemy comes to afflict your flesh, to tempt your flesh, that you won't see what God is trying to do in the spirit. Amen. And so that's why when you hear things, when truth comes, it hurts because it affects your flesh. Your feelings get hurt. Because it's a 
reflect your flesh. But how many of y'all know whatever didn't kill you is there to help you? Amen. We learn Come on, preacher. by many things in life. Everything that, amen, uh, we used to take castor oil. They don't use that now. They use capsules. And so you wouldn't know the taste. But back in the day, we took tablespoon of castor oil. I can't get nobody. It wasn't good to us, but it was good for us. And look at somebody and say, if you can take it, you will make it. What you can't have, you can't wear your feelings on your shoulder. Amen, somebody. You got to understand it's not about you. It's about him. Oh God, if I could just do what I wanted to do. Hallelujah. But it's not about me. It's about him. Now when they heard this, they were pricked, they were cut. How many of y'all know the word of God is sharper than any two-edged sword? It cuts to the ascending and the separating of the bone and the marrow. It gets to the places, watch this now, where you try to hide the word of God, find those places in us that your mama don't know and you ain't told nobody about. Amen. God is a discerner of the spirit. He knows what we're thinking. And that's why, amen, I can't help you in some areas because what you need can only come by the word of God. Amen, somebody. And the deliverance that comes from God's word. Look at somebody say, you don't have to stay like that all your life. You can be delivered today. But you have to take personal ownership. You got to say enough is enough and too much is too much. And there's got to be a better way. Look at somebody and say change. God is looking for us to change. When they heard this, they were cut in their heart. Are you hearing me? And responded unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Men and brethren, uh -huh. what shall we do? Uh -huh. God bless you. you. May be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'm going to, amen, move on a little bit later. But for the sake of you having to stand, that we're just going to pause for a moment. Because there are three things I want to speak about, amen, today as it relates to change. Thank you, Jesus. True revival brings true change. Yes, it does, preacher. Amen. And if we continue to conduct our lives as we've always conducted our lives, we can only expect what we've always received. Yeah, Amen, somebody. And so when a person changes, you know, first of all, there is repentance. There is acknowledgement yes, that I've messed up. Yes, and because of the repentance, it brings change. Yes, a person who never fails or feel like they've never done nothing, never been nothing. Amen, yes, praise God. Then they will never change because they'll keep on going the same way they've been going in. And there's a whole lot of folk, praise God, who refuse to repent. They refuse to change because they feel like it's somebody else. Amen, somebody. Thank you. We blame it on everything. We blame it on the weather. We blame it on white folk. We blame it on the job. We blame all our issues on everything. But look at somebody and say, it's me, it's me, it's me. We've got to recognize that, amen, true revival brings change. And the first step of change is repentance. Is repentance. Repentance is a man, a godly sorrow over the injury or the error that you've affected. Thank you, Jesus. There was a, there's a scripture we used to teach, amen, when you uh, did something wrong or you thought that you hurt your brother or your sister, you would stand up and say, if I hurt anybody, amen, if I said anything, forgive me, amen. But now we don't, we don't testify like that. We hurt feed people's feelings, we just keep on going. Talk all out on top of our head, we just keep on going. Step on folks, though, y'all quiet on this side. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And wounds do not heal by themselves. Wounds must be taken care of. Else infection comes in. And then the only way you can then, then alleviate that pain is do it. But I ain't trying to cut nobody off. I ain't trying to lose nobody. Amen. We need everybody. Come on, somebody. I don't want the devil to have nobody going up out of here. Amen. With a twisted, understandable things are. So again, I'm standing up. Y'all, can y'all see me? If I hurt anybody feeling, if I've done anything out for anybody, listen, I apologize. I'm sorry. Because it ain't about me. That's who I am. Well, he didn't mean that. He just saying that. That's the devil wants you to believe that. Don't you know people don't have to say nothing to you? They're going about their business. They don't care about you. They tell you quicker than quicker than they hit you. Get on. <laughs> that ain't that ain't love, y'all. That ain't love. Hey man, praise God. You got a wound, you gotta take care of that wound. Apply special application to it. And sometimes you can't put a band-aid on, you just gotta let the air. It needs sunlight. But repentance, a turning of attitude of how you thought about a thing. And so the disciples, and they're very, very, very important because, amen, thank you, Jesus. The men and brethren who were established here at the day of Pentecost were individuals who were very set in their own way of thinking and doing things. And uh, they were very, very determined that uh, God was going to do something uh, in a new and living way, the way they thought. But how many of y'all know God does what he wants? And so he, uh, they understood that the very Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom God had brought into the world, this same Christ now, they were responsible for his death. They were the ones who were responsible for the one who had come to help them. They had come to hurt him. And so when the truth of their error came to light, then they understood that there had to be a change made. And the purpose of the man and woman of God is to bring to you things that oftentimes you don't want to hear. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And so the Bible teaches us that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so Peter speaks to them concerning the error of their way and then help them to understand that men and brethren, this same Christ of glory, him had you crucified, him had you killed, you're the culprit, you're the ones. And so in order for you to be blessed now, you must recognize that the repentance is what's needed. And so if any of us are going to go further along with what God has for us, we must turn from our way of doing things because there's got to be a better way. The second thing, amen, the first, the second point I want to make, amen, concerning our revival experience is that after repentance, then there comes a leap of faith. Then we move now that we have cleared the air. Now we move forward in faith in God. In verse 37, they were pricked in their hearts. They were cut to the core. They asked the question, men and brethren, what shall we do now that I have repented? Now that I recognize that there's a better way for me, what shall I do? How can I move on from here now? You know, amen, it's not only just uh, explaining to a person what they've done, but you also have to give a person a solution to how they're going to live. We're very quick at pointing fingers at people. We're very quick at pointing out a person's weakness and downfall. But what are you going to do about it when they do recognize that they've done wrong? What are you going to do about it to give them instruction of how to live holy? What are you going to do about giving them a way amen, to live for God now that they have turned around into a new and living way? Thank you, Jesus. And so Paul responds, Peter responds unto them these words, repent and then in faith be baptized in the name 
name of Jesus Christ, the same one whom you crucified now, you got to go back. I heard somebody say a few days ago, the same bridge that brought you, don't be careful that you mess it up because it may be the same bridge that you have to go back over. The Jews that were assembled here in Pentecost had crucified Jesus Christ. And so now the same ones who had, amen, accused him, amen, of being a wine bibber, the same one who accused him of being a devil, the same ones who accused him of not being the one whom God had sent, now they have to recognize that he is the one who has their blessing in store for them. Amen, somebody. Be careful of how you treat people because the same ones that you discard, the same ones you talk about, the same ones you see God in and them, and maybe the same ones that got your blessing for you. Amen, somebody. Praise God. Be very careful to minimize and despise and cast away people because God has a way of making your enemies your footstool. The same folk, amen, that put you down, say you may not be nothing. That's all right. You keep on doing what you're supposed to do. God will cause them to come back to you one day and say, you know, baby girl, I need you to pray for me. Amen. The same people that say you would never be nothing will be the same folk that say, you know, God, let me hear for you to give, give me some counsel because I don't know what to do. The same people, I can't get no talk here today, that say you there will be nothing with the same folk that will join your church. It'll be the same people, praise God, that will come be a part of your prayer circle. Amen. Be careful how you minimize, amen, the value of people. And so these individuals here saw, recognized that Peter had a word for them. That word was repent, every one of you. And the same Christ who you say never would be nothing, the same Christ who, amen, you dismissed as being a phony or nothing, the same one now God says repent and come to him. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children to as many that are far off as many as the Lord thy God shall call. Which means to us that after repentance is made, faith in Christ, amen, will cause many people to come to Christ because of your faith. The promise is unto you, but in order to receive the promise, we've got to recognize that we have work to do. We've got work to do. Look at somebody say, we still have work to do. Jesus ushered in a new and living way. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, 19 and 20 talks about a, man, a way that we have made unto us now. We don't have to have anybody to lead us into God. We have him for ourselves now. There is a new and living way that God has provided for the people of God. We can walk in that new and living way after repentance has been demonstrated. And faith in Christ now goes forth. We have a new and living walk of faith that is far better than merely just going to church. You know, coming to church is a good thing, but I don't want you just coming to church just to come to church. God wants you to become part of the family of God. He wants you to realize faith in Him. He wants you to realize that there is a better way to live and there is a better way to serve and there is a better way to worship. There is a better way of fellowship. I don't have to keep on living like I've been living. Amen. Up one down, down the next, up one day, down the next. But God establishes a new and living way for us. Not just going through the motions because I sang in the choir, but you ought to come to the church house and come to God because you love to worship and you love to praise Him. You are singing not because you only sound good, but you're singing the words in the song because you know that you are singing from a personal perspective. God saved you one day. He raised you one day. I don't just come to church just to be coming to church to see who's here and what I've got on. Baby, I changed my life. I repented of my sin. And now I'm living out my salvation in faith to him. That's why I don't have to worry about who comes to church. If my mama don't go, that's all right. If my daddy don't go, that's okay. But as for me and my we gonna serve the Lord and when true revival comes when true repentance is had you go with the, nobody else go you testify when nobody else testify do I have anybody here been, 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 that's been revived this week is there anybody here beside me that's excited about what God is doing there is a new and 
living way. My sins have been forgiven. My past is behind me. And I'm not going to allow the devil, amen, to make a big to do out of what happened last week and last month and last year because I'm making a turnaround. I know what's better ahead of me than what's behind me. I know I had some bad days back there. I know I had some sleepless nights back there. But is there anybody beside me today that's going in faith today? I'm going to lay aside every weight. I'm going to lay aside everything that the devil said I couldn't do. I'm going to lay aside everything that's been holding me back because my day is brighter. My future is ahead of me. I see destiny in my view. What happened? Yes, it happened. But I'm going higher. Look at somebody say higher. And true revival does not contend upon you coming to church only. But what you do when you get here, when you come to the house of God, if you were it down in your sanctified soul, and if you made up your mind that this is a new day, you don't mind praising God. I celebrate you because I once was lost on my way to hell. Wasn't ready to live and wasn't fit to die. But Jesus, somebody called his name Jesus. He came in one day. I repented of my sin. I made a turnaround. The main thing. Amen. 
Many other words that he exhort telling them to be careful where you come from. Because if you're not careful of what you, uh, if you're not careful about where you're going, the enemy will slip you back into where you came from. See, it seems like, you know, this week I know some folks, oh, I'm so glad the five-day revival is over. Come on with it, preacher. Come on, preacher. You got to be careful with that. Because that tells you, think, make you think, well, you know, you can slip back into your old way of doing it. But really, after revival comes, the revival is just not starting. Because now it's time to get to work. Find somebody and say, it's time to get to work. That gift that you've been hoarding, amen, worried about whose feet you're going to step on, and whose feet that you're going to hurt. Hello, somebody. Thank you, Jesus. Look at this one. Let's just get to work. Watch what happens when true repentance and faith is demonstrated. Then they that gladly received the word were baptized. Amen. In other words, they publicly would change. Watch this now. When true revival comes and change takes place, everybody's going to know it. Amen, preacher. Amen. Everybody's going to see it. It's going to be demonstrated in our behavior after that. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. They gladly received the word with what? How do you know that they changed, Pastor? Yes, yes. Because they were baptized. Yes, the Lord. Baptism is a public demonstration of an inward grace. That's it. That's been a change. That there's been a change in my life. Amen. The places I used to go. Hello, some. I ain't going back no more. Amen. The way I used to do, I'm not going to do it again. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, we like to dance and shout, but amen, as I said before, it's not so much how you dance, how you live after you leave church. Everybody can be saved in church. I hear a whole lot of holidays and thank you, Jesus, right now. Yeah. Well, what do you, how do you talk when you're away from the church? What places do you go? What kind of activities do you participate in? You always have holidays on your lips or you have something else on your lips? God's looking for us to change, y'all. Somebody shout change. Change for the better. Confession is the third point of your revival. Faith in Christ is demonstrated in baptism. Bible say the same day they were added unto them about 3,000 souls. The harvest of the ministry is contingent upon your confession of faith. Who brought somebody to church with them last week? Who brought somebody to church with them this morning? Don't raise your hand. Amen. Praise God. But your confession of faith is just not based upon you, your forward no more. But you can be concerned about the little girl that's pregnant. You ought to be concerned about the man that's strung out on crack. Concerned about your cousin them's. They ain't got no car to ride to church. Go get them. Amen. Ain't got nothing to wear. Just if you can't talk to them, find some form to wear. Amen. Amen. They that gladly received the word and publicly were baptized. The Bible says they were added to the church about 3,000 souls. Amen. Look at somebody says it's all about souls. Not about numbers, but about souls. You can have a whole lot of folk. Amen. But if they ain't saved, you ain't got a whole lot of nothing. Look at somebody says it's all about souls. Amen. Yes, you want people to come to church, but you want them to change. Come as you are, but when you come, you got to somewhere change. Thank you, Jesus. 
And they continue steadfastly in the apostles' teaching yes, they do. Yes. and fellowship uh -huh. uh -oh. yeah. and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Yes. Amen. The practices that the believer will have after true revival occurs is that they just won't have this to be a one-time experience. Okay. And as I say, oftentimes members come to church. And if you're a part of this ministry, I expect to see you just not on Sunday only, but every now and then you ought to come to Wednesday Bible study. Every now and then you ought to come to Friday night worship. Every now and then you ought to come and pray. I can't get no talk to you. Right, right, right. True revival. It's going to be affected by the change that you have placed. Yes, Any time people place value on what they are part of, Amen. they'll be a part of. Yes, you got a question the individual. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Kind of like me. I was on a board or something. And my, really, to be honest with you, my, my heart really wasn't in it. And so what did I do when board meeting came? I didn't show up. After a while, they kicked me off the board. Because I didn't value it. When you value something, you'll be a part of it. Now, I'm not advocating, don't get nervous, I'm not advocating we kick you out the church because you only show up Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. But true change is demonstrated by us continually, how? Steadfastly in what we've been taught. Amen. And I say your blessing is connected to ministry. And so you can't be strong and your change will not last unless you continue steadfastly. Amen. That's right. Amen. You're right, Richie. You're right. You want to be strong? You can't be strong staying at home. All this revival we had last week, tonight we got communion. Amen. It's one of the sacred parts of our church. Yes. And if you got any kind of salvation, you ought to be trying to find your way once a month to communion. You're all quiet. But it's the truth. Many other signs and words did he begin to testify and exhort. And how they knew that what change had occurred in their life was taking place. And I'm almost finished. They continued steadfastly in the teaching of the church. Uh -huh. And in fellowship. Mm -hmm. And in breaking of bread and in prayer. All of those components of the church are necessary for you to be strong. Amen. Prayer will keep you from sin. And sin will keep you from prayer. Fellowship will strengthen your walk because you can't make it by yourself. By the word of God teaches us, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a man of some is. Amen. For we are stronger together Amen. than we are apart. Amen. Don't ever think you don't need nobody. Amen. Hello, somebody. Amen. You're going to need somebody. Amen. Amen. And so the early church, amen, it was necessity that they depended upon each other because they had become enemies of the world. Yeah. And when you make up your mind, you're going to do for God, get ready. The devil don't like it. Yeah. Yeah. Amen, somebody. Yeah. When you make up your mind that you're going to let God use you, the enemy is going to get on your case. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Reminds me when I first got saved many, many years ago. And when I told my girlfriend that I was getting saved, amen, she dropped me like a hot potato. Because she knew the things we used to do, we can't do that no more. Y'all young for quiet. The 
The place where we used to go, we can't do that no more. So she said, you that Jesus stuff, that ain't for me. And so when you make up your mind, you're going to live for God. Amen. Just get ready. But I heard somebody say, for God I live and for God I die. You got to make up your mind. Somebody said it again. You got to have a made up mind. My heart is fixed and my mind is made up. Ask somebody, say, is your mind made up today to go all over the Lord? That's why you're going to need somebody in the church to help you. Thank you, Jesus. Don't forsake this assembly of yourself together. You can't make it by yourself. And that's why God places us in the body of Christ. So we might be helpers one to another. That's why he places us in the body of Christ. Members individually, but we're all part of his body. So don't ever feel like it's them against us. We all in this together. Lean on somebody and we all in this together. The enemy don't like him. We don't like he don't like us. And we don't like him. But I know that we can make it if we stick together. Tell us that we can make it if we stick together. I don't care what the enemy has told you. Amen. Praise God. I've repented of my way. I've made my faith of confession. And so now I'm going to make my declaration to the world. As Jesus said, yes, sir. In the book of John chapter 14, Jesus was leaving the earth. And he said, yes, I'm going to leave. But when I leave, I want you to know that when I leave here, I'm going to send something else in my place. And he's going to be greater than I am. Because when I leave, he's going to step in my place. He's a paraclete that we need. He's our helper. He's our comforter. And he helps me to make the change that I need. And that's why you got to recognize that I can't do it by myself. I can't make it alone. But thank God for the Holy Ghost power. Thank God for his spirit that dwells in me. So the things that I want to do, I can do them now because God has sent the helper. God has sent the Saints of God, they could 
discern some things. They can see some things. They saw things in the spirit that you didn't know what, what you didn't understand how they saw it. And what we need today, if there's gonna be true revival, if there's gonna be true change, we gotta have power. Not only in the pulpit, but power in the pew. Power. were done by the apostles. And so what we need to understand today, that after repentance is done, and faith in God is confessed in Him, then God expects some signs and some wonders to be performed in the church. Look at us and say, there's work to do, there's work to do, there's work to do. People, I need to see the change in your life. It's not just temporary. It's just not partial. It's just not Sunday to Sunday. But it is every day that we are demonstrating the change in our lives. Yes, they began to sell their possessions. They began to sell their goods. And they distributed unto all men as every one of them had need. Yes, true change will occur as we distribute out of ourselves. Not that we have to amen sell our material goods to give to others, but we begin to share the wealth of God. We begin to prophesy into people's lives what God can do for them. Yes, they actually, amen, literally sold their possessions and laid them the apostles see that was because a man the ridicule and the ostracizing of the early church made it necessary for them to part of their goods and to have a social system by which they helped one another but what we need today is not so much what we need material things we need to share of ourselves let them know baby you can make it encourage one another to let them know hold on help is on the way we need to part of ourselves and prophesy in the lives of individuals who come to church one way to let them know they don't have to go back the same way we need to begin to begin together on one accord and begin to tell people there's got to be a better way if you're sick in your body somebody that'll heal you if you're discouraged in your spirit lay your sanctified hands on them and let them know you can go back a different way they begin to continue to daily daily steadfastly and with one accord in the house of God they begin to break bread one to another they went to one another's houses giving them understand that we are better together than we are apart and the last verse of 47 number of the last verse in this scripture they begin to praise God and when fellowship and when teaching and when prayer is done we can praise God do we have anybody here today who's ready to praise God is there anybody here that's ready to celebrate God I'm turning from where I used to be and I'm walking in a new and different way sharing of oneself. It's a partnership of oneself. We come together as different parts into a commonality, into a common goal. We want the church to demonstrate the power of God and we do that in our fellowship one to another. We do that in our coming together, not apart from one another, but coming together one with the other. If one is down, others are encouraged to help them. If one is discouraged, others are encouraged to come alongside them and they help them to understand that it's just not a waste of time, but it's just a matter of time. But you hold on. Just keep holding on. Don't give up because true revival in your way. True revival is demonstrated in you pressing on in the help and hope of God. Clap your hands and tell God thank you. I'm going to change.
to your feet. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and tell God yes. They praised God and they had favor with all the people. And the Bible teaches us that the Lord added to the church. Daily such as what should be saved. All this week we've had a great move of God. Amen. God has something for every person this week. Each and every speaker who came and showed it in the Holy Ghost. Amen. Whatever your situation was, God was able to meet every need. Monday night preaching, and ministering, Tuesday night healings and miracles. Yeah. Wednesday night just a lot of rain. Yeah. Uh -huh. Thursday night just prayer and anointing. Yeah. Yeah. And then Friday night it was just a blowout. Yeah. God had something for everybody. Yeah. So nobody needs to go away discouraged. Or not say. But there might be somebody today. They say pastor preacher. I know there's got to be a change. There's got to be a better way for me. And maybe you didn't get all that you needed last week. But I extended you the offer of salvation. And the offer of change. The Bible says the day that you hear his voice. Harden not your heart. And that's difficult for some because they're holding on Amen. so closely Amen. to all that they know. Amen. But if you really, really make up your mind today Amen. that you want to change, yes, it, preacher. this is your hour. Amen. And this is your day. Yeah. Whatever your need is, I want you to know that there is no ill that heaven can't heal. Yes. And no mountain that can't be surmounted. Jesus came and he died that we might have life and life more abundantly. With your heads bowed and your eyes closed, there's somebody here today that wants to be saved. Preacher, that's me. I came to the revival last week, but I ain't made up my mind. But today, I make up my mind to change. Real change is needed. No sense if you go into the gym and not working out. That doesn't do you any good. No sense of coming to church Sunday after Sunday and there's no real change. No, it does you no good. No sense of us calling a revival and get a great move, God, and you go back and do the same things you've always done. That does no good. I can preach that I'm sweating down in my toes. But if you're not willing to make a change, I'm just sweating myself out. Am I talking to anybody here today? The time is over for spectating. The time is over for entertaining you. Time is over for jumping up and down, but there's no real change. The days are over. Some of you want prophecy. Some of you want a word spoken over your life. Unless you're willing to change, repent, and turn, there can be no real prophecy. There can be no real word. Unless the people give God an atmosphere of being receptive, God will withhold his word. Thank you, Jesus. But until the people respond, yes, yes. as the people responded in the book of Acts, yes. men and brethren, yes. what shall we do? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Thank and you today, God. if you're not saved, or wherever you are, yes, or you need a double determination, whatever your situation is, I want you just to come down to this altar. We don't make enough altar calls, but today come down to, I came past the Tuesday, I came Wednesday. That's fine and good. But you're still doing the same old thing. And until you really make a change, 
I want you to keep on coming down to this altar until God truly deliver you. You need to keep on coming back to this altar. I don't got more amens than that. Yes, is it hard? I folk going to look at me, yeah, that's all right. But when you make up your mind that you don't care who looks at you, when you come to the place that nobody got a heaven or hell to push you in, you will come down to this altar. Thank you. Make your way here now. Whatever your situation is, whatever your problem, I want to pray with you. Only my hands upon you. We're not going to be lengthy no long. But I wouldn't dare leave this house without coming down for prayer. I need thee. Is there anybody here today that needs the help of the Lord? Because only what needs to be done, God is the only one that can do it. Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting. I'm not going to rush. I'm not going to be Come on now, sister. Thank you, Jesus. There's some others need to come. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you, Jesus. Come, missionaries. Come, you know the Lord.
change. I need 15 of you just to turn around. Say it's over.
To whom much is given, much is expected. It won't happen by itself. Tell God, thank you. Men and brethren, what must I do? What must you do? Change is effective. You got to take ownership of that change. Amen, somebody? Amen. Praise the Lord. We're preparing to sow our seed today. It's often time, but I look now. I really want us to understand that God is expecting for there to be a change in us. That's right. Amen. Amen. It won't happen just by accident. You got to respond to God. Lord, what must I do? Yes, what yes. would you have for me to do? Yes. Like a few days ago, we, yes, yes. we set the vision. Pastor Peter sets the vision for the ministry. We're going to have back to school. We suck something for going back to school. And part of that was uh, something about back to school supplies. Did I say that? Wonderful and fine, but I had nobody say, Pastor, what can I do to help? church because after a while there's so much goes on that Amen. the hands of a leader cannot stand by itself. Made a, made a seat at 
and he sat down and held his arms up because he knew that the success of the victory yes. was as long as the man of God stayed with his yes. hands raised. Amen. Which means that each and every one of us have an ownership responsibility. Yes, sir. All right. Amen. Very good. Amen. 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 We had a very pivotal time in this ministry. Your response ought to be like they respond. We just come out of revival. What can I do? Amen. Amen. What's my job? How can I help? Amen. Am I talking to somebody? Amen. I don't need to have a title. I don't need to have a position. Cast out his feet. No. Where can I help? Amen. We made people feel so uncomfortable sometimes. Amen. I had somebody, she just constantly talk about what she didn't want to say. What are you talking about? You're going to hurt somebody. You know, you know, uh, God placed you in the body Amen. to work out your soul salvation. Yes, sir. So get to work. Amen. Well, I don't want to hurt. Would you stop that? Get to work. Amen. Well, I don't want to Would you stop it? Get to work. Amen. Right. 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 Would you keep me stopping? Get to work. That's it. And after about 15, trying to overcome her objections, oh, she finally trying to get to work. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Look at somebody saying it's time to work. It's time to work. What must I do? What must I do? Not just on Sunday, but through the week. Amen. <clears throat> Not just wait till Sunday. Amen. Get the house in order and full set. Amen. Amen. I want to pray for our giving today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for your gift that you've given. As you know, we have services. We don't impress upon you financially because we know you're going to do the very best that you can do. Amen. Amen. I hope you recognize that. No two, three, four, five offers, but when we ask, we really need for you to do your very best. dollars that ain't your very best. And what God did last week, my God, it was simply awesome. I want to pray for your giving. Father, I thank you for every gift given. Every seed that's sown. In the name of Jesus, we pray, God, thank you for every liberal soul that's made that. Now, God, pray the blessing of Abraham on every soul that I give it will not be in vain. That it is planted in good ground. That calls the bounty to come. We pray, God, for harvest. We pray for the fruit of our giving shall not be in vain, but it will accomplish that that is set out to do. We give God a faith, nothing wavering. Strengthen the hand of the giver. Strengthen the hand of the sower. Let them be made fat according to thy word. In the matchless name of Jesus, I command the blessing to overtake the people of God. For you've been faithful. So in response to your faithfulness, God, we so attend to our increase. God, we give back to you knowing that you will cause men to give it to our bosom. Good measure. Press down, shaking together and run over. We pray the blessings of Abraham, even now, God, and the blessings of promotion to come. Even not from the east, west, nor the south, but promotion coming from God. And we bless you Amen. and we praise in advance all that you do for us. God, we bless you and we give you not grudgingly, but brutally we give as unto the oh Lord. Because you've been faithful. Now show yourself strong. God bless us to be a blessing. Oh God, you blessed us more ways than we can think of. And in response to your faithfulness to us, we give back a portion of our increase. In Jesus' name we pray and we bless you. Give God praise offering for your giving today. We want to give God praise. God. Let's give our Pastor Hand Clap such a good job today. And I thank God for him. And I thank God for him because he the one uh, 
I believe we have from him, we wouldn't have had a, such a good revival like this because he chose the one that God led him. So let's give him a hand clap. Those were good advantages. I was blessed. And everybody in here that was blessed, you sure all will be grateful and thank God. And God has blessed us. We're on a different level. Y'all come out to, y'all not, you don't have to sit in the same old seat. You come a little closer. Because you're a different individual now, right? Ain't got to stay on the same old pew. We got plenty of room up front. All right, so I, I don't want to be bad. I want to be where the fat. They say it all over. I want to be closer to the fat. They said close to the front. We used to we leave them seat to somebody else. So if you've been changed, God done something for you, I'll be running to the front. Man, man, man. All right, we look for everybody at the can and wheel. We look for you to pay us off in the day, which no lower than ten dollars. If you do this, I know we have a long week, but we also still got obligation, right? Amen. And I'm going to pay my ass. And uh, you got uh, three or four things on the other building fund. And you got the offering, you got the pastoral gift. Now, pastor and wife, the wife, is coming up in a couple of weeks, and a couple of weeks. Amen. All right, and don't come up. Now, I've been telling y'all this for three or four months, a long time. So, everybody can and will. Uh, let's. Pay on this. Half of it will do something, y'all. Don't come up empty handed when you come down to Pastor Reveal. Because El Shaw preach hard every week. I ain't never heard him say he was sick. I can't preach today. He keep on doing it, right? So let's let's uh return the favor. Let's do something for him. It's a blessing. It's the your blessing is connected to the ministry. And I know that right. I'm looking for a blessing this week too. So everybody look for a blessing. Be old, that, that's be your opinion, y'all. You want a blessing this week? Mailbox, whatever. I'm looking for a mailbox or whatever. It can come any way you want, right? Guy ain't even dropped mine in the mail, but I put down the envelope. So I uh, just look off in the envelope, so I said, I sure will. I looked off and that was $20. Well, thank you. All right, so what we're saying, any way you bless me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. So let's do this. And uh, everybody got the envelopes in your hand? Thank you, Lord, for Diane, my big co-worker. Thank God. All right, everybody got the envelopes. Raise your hand toward heaven because we're looking for a blessing and we're ready to receive it, right? Amen. Women got lawyer purses. Man got bill folks to be filled. So let's raise it toward heaven. I'm looking for something. Y'all scared? All right. Uh, y'all didn't give it all away last week, did you? All right, let's do this, y'all. If you don't have enough to raise your hand, y'all raise two. So go out any way you bless me. I'll be satisfied. All right. And I want to tell every married man and uh, this. Now, when you get into Thailand, your wife come along with your husband. Because when a blessing comes in the house, it's going to bless both of you, right? And, and I want the pastor to bless him and myself, not just me. So both of us get into Thailand. When he bless Sister Edna, I'm blessed. So you wife, get in that tie line with your husband. Don't, don't, don't miss out on nothing. All right, let's do this, y'all. Arms um, stretch wide towards heaven. Right spot in heaven, we just want to thank you this day. Lord, thank you this week. Lord, thank you how you blessed us right now. Now, God, Jesus, open up the door for us. Open up the door that closed in our face. Lord, give us favors. Lord, even on this week, God, somebody need a financial blessing. The preacher said 21 days, but God, we need a blessing this week. We need a seven-day blessing. God, you're able to do this, God. Lord, you told us to act. We acted for a Lord, a breakthrough. We acted for a turnaround in the name of Jesus. God, somebody need an overflow. God, you can do this, God. Bless them with more than enough. Lord, when they go to the bank, wherever they go, Lord, give them favor. Don't let them both turn them down. But God, Jesus, open that door right now. God, you're able to do it. Give them that testimony. Lord, give them a testimony. Lord, fill, fill up the bill bowl. Fill up the purses. God, you can do this, God. Lord, the needs are so great. But God, you're greater than the needs. God, we need you right now. In the name of you, we pray. Thank God. Amen. I'm looking for my blessing. Not up here for nothing. All right, Richards.
done at this time. We kind of thank y'all what y'all done. And look for a blessing this week. If we look good and have faith, God is going to bless you. And some of y'all tell some of these testimonies. I know God already blessed you. All right, at this time, I'm going to turn it in a little bit. Thank you. Let us praise the Lord. Wasn't that a wonderful word coming from our pastor on today? Are you encouraged to go on? What we started last week was just the start. A start of a change. Amen. Amen. Sister Cheryl York, she... She recorded our services during the past week. And she has a one-time special for the Saints. Five DVD set. We had five services. We have a five DVD set. Six DVD set. For $25. One time. So, so sure, y'all, there's a Cheryl in the back. If you want your DVDs for the revival, she's right back there. I need to see her today. Amen? So she can get those to you. Amen? And one thing I'm going to lift up is we have, we must support our leaders. We must support leadership. Amen? And we must keep the, our leaders, the leaders' arms lifted up. And one and the way we do that, one of the ways, well, just one of the ways we do that, is every year we appreciate, we show appreciation to them once a year. Amen. We have an appreciation service. We used to have an anniversary appreciation service here. But now we move to the Stephen F. Austin Grand Ballroom. You want to show your support for our leadership on August the 15th. At 6 p.m. Saturday, we want to be there. We want to purchase our tickets so that the food and everything can get ordered. So everything will be in order. So when we get there, all we have to do is show our appreciation for them, praise the Lord, and eat our food. Amen? Amen. So we want to make sure that we have our tickets. $20, 18 and over, under 18, $10. Amen. 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 We actually, we realize that family has more than one child, so we are making a discounted rate for those parents who have more than one child. Um, so if you are interested in that, please see me. Amen. Amen. But we want to show our support for leadership. Amen. Amen. Tonight, this is first Sunday. First Sunday. So yeah. we want to make sure that we come back tonight. Y'all say it. Yeah. So you should be able to take part in the community that we have tonight at 6 o'clock. So we ask you to come back to Cheryl tonight. We only have this community once a month. Once a month. We recognize the show what Jesus has done for us. He gave his life for us. He shed his blood for us. So we want to come back and partake in that community. Amen? Stand to your feet. Just grab your neighbor's hand. Because we hope to see them again. Just look at him and say, may the Lord watch. May the Lord watch. Between me and thee. Between me and thee. While we're absent. While we're absent. One from another. One from another.